What's poppin', y'all? We back with another episode of the Squid Games Aftermath podcast. I am your host, DeAndre, aka Player288, and today I have with me a special guest. She comes to us all the way from Texas, down under, Miss Madison Cavazos, Player57. What's happening? Hey, what's up? Thank you for having me. I'm loving the festivities in the background. She said, I'm getting Christmas up early now. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love Christmas. Okay, okay. Well, we got an early Christmas present with the Squid Games coming out and stuff like that. So, um, how are you feeling about the whole show? Like after you know what you've seen so far? Um, I love it. I think it's really good. Um, yeah, I like it. Exciting. Okay, okay. So tell me, Madison, why did you apply for Squid Games Challenge? Oh, because of that huge cash prize. I mean, that was really cool seeing that. Um, and so I just thought I would take the chance and apply and see what happens she said, you got to take the chances and or you ain't gonna get no prizes so definitely makes yes. sense right there that money is crazy um so yeah. you apply for the show and you know you go through the process and you find out you've been accepted so you're packing up the night before you head out onto the plane what's going through your head um a little bit of fear i was a little scared like traveling that far like by myself but more excited i um like to take risks sometimes so i feel like it was just fun so i, I really felt all the emotions scared happy excited it, is this okay like what am i like what am i doing kind of type mm -hmm. no definitely it's definitely nerve-wracking have you been overseas before yeah that was my first oh, time wow what an yeah. experience that was okay yeah. so we get over there and we get in the hotels for a little bit, but then it's time to get up and, you know, they tell us the next morning we're going to the first game. So what's going on in your head the last night at the hotel? Um, I actually felt very calm that last night because, um, like, the whole time in the hotel room, I was kind of freaking out. But that last night, I was calm and, like, just, re like, excited, like, ready to get to it, like, the first game. So waiting was just so long. So I was excited was definitely a lot of waiting and waiting and waiting, but soon we got to wait some more. And yeah. um, we so we get out there, we get on the bus, head over. And so you get in the tents, get yourself checked up and whatnot. When you walk into the red light, green light arena for the first time, tell me what goes on in your head. It was so surreal, like seeing all of the, like all of the players come out of their tents it was like whoa like we're really here and like seeing the set for the first time it was very surreal like i honestly thought like i was in the show yeah it 100%. was cool so you know we have the getting ready to start we go through the practice round and then it's time for the real thing so what's your strategy going into this well first off the practice round i failed <laughs> i like kept going and i was like oh my gosh like i'm out i would have been out um so thank God for that practice round. Um, but after that, I was kind of feeling uneasy because I got out like that practice round. But once I got past that first real round, I was like, okay, like I think I just stop early. Stop before that music ends. Like you'll be okay. And I just kept yeah. that going for the next okay, seven hours. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So when we get started and you know, you get your first stance and then five minutes pass, 10 minutes pass, 15 minutes pass. What are you thinking about? Oh my gosh, is this real? Like, is everyone else hurting like I am? Or is it just me? The hardest part was honestly not looking at the people around me falling. Like the people that were calling for medic and stuff. That was hard. Like not looking and seeing what's going on behind me. That part was hard. But I was just honestly thinking the whole time. Because we just came back from a vacation like the month prior. I was just thinking happy thoughts. I'm like, okay, you're not here. You're in mexico or you're in new york city right now getting about to get proposed to like i was thinking all the happy thoughts okay positive mindset that's definitely gonna help you get through the game and so you slowly creeping forward you know one round at a time one hour at a time and you see the finish line in sight and it's within your grasp what are you thinking about just hold it like five more minutes no not five more minutes. ten more minutes <laughs> you can do it 15 more minutes it's like you're so close like don't give up now like you're so close i was just focused on the doll because i was like right in the middle of her so i was just looking at her legs <laughs> like i'm so close 
do. Well, good things. You know, you got real close and you eventually make it. So congratulations. Player 57 makes it across and she's still in the money. And so when you when you make it across, we get go back to the hotel and then we go getting ready to go into the dorm. So when you first step into the dorms, tell me what are you thinking when you see everything? Uh, another surreal moment for sure. The dorms were was really well done. Um, it was beautiful in there. So I I thought it was really cool. I told myself I would get the top bunk. Um, so I hurried up up there. That was not smart. I should not have gotten the top bunk. But um, why wasn't that smart? Really well, I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and it was like so hard just like waking up, climbing down that ladder, like down three bumps. It was just, it was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was thinking about myself and I was like, going up and down, uh, I got to quick get a quick exit. So yeah. when you sit in there and you see all these different people, are you thinking, I need to talk to everybody, I need to find a small group and then who do you end up getting close with? Um, so right away, I got close with Ned. Um, I don't, I don't remember his number. I'm terrible with numbers. I think 404. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's because we, after Red Light, Green Light, we like passed the finish line together. So I kind of found him first. Um, and then eventually I found my little crew um, with Nayo, Yara, and Ayana. Okay, nice, nice. Got a little small gathering with some people. Hopefully, you know, I'm trying to get to Ned soon. He's he keep ducking and dodging with the interviews. But we're going to try it, Ned. Come on now. Stop ducking and dodging. I, I just met up with him uh, like two days ago. And um, I was like, he was telling me, he was like, I'm trying to make time to get on the podcast. Hopefully, come through, Ned. Okay, come on, Ned. What you doing now? <laughs> what you doing, player? <laughs> Um, well, cool. Well, uh, that's that nice. Got a nice little group. So we spent some time in the dorms, and then eventually we find out that player two hundred has been eliminated. And this, you find when this happens, what are you thinking? Um, I was like, oh wow, this is real. <laughs> like we are in it now. Like this is the game. I was, I was freaking out. Honestly, um, I I wasn't. I didn't really know him, but I knew he was like getting the games together. Like he was, he seemed very friendly from afar um so i was pretty shocked to see him go yeah no definitely was definitely a big surprise and nobody saw that coming especially from two random people that had nothing to do with anything and <laughs> she's just gone yeah. but we did not know that at the time and yeah. it was very shocking it's very very yeah. shocking but that means the game pretty much has begun and so it is time to go to the second game and we soon find ourselves in this white room and we see four lines. What are you thinking when you first get in this white room? So I actually almost took number four because four is like my favorite number. So I was like, okay, but the second challenge in the show was Nalgana. Um, and like, I think I remember four being the umbrella. So I was like, okay, if this is that challenge, I definitely don't want to do four. They could switch it up, um, but I was like, I don't want to do four. So I just, Still stuck with an um, even number and chose two. Okay, okay. So we find out the rules, and uh, you know, the people in the front of the line have to pick the shapes. Mm -hmm. And so the first group goes in there, they can't decide, boom, they're gone. Second group goes in there, boom, they're gone. Third group goes in there, they finally decide, and it goes in the order that it was it was circle, triangle, star, umbrella. Mm -hmm. and so your line is thrilled because you got triangle. Cool. Did you feel like you owed th four, two, three something? in this moment right now um yeah i was i was really thankful for him like he went in there stood his ground um so i was extremely thankful because i think the round before that we almost got umbrella um and so i was like yes like thank you you're the best yeah. but um definitely. yeah i think they all did their part in there for sure yeah he definitely came through in the clutch for y'all so mm -hmm. you find out you get triangle elated and so we finally go and walk into the playground and it's time to get started. So tell me what your strategy is trying to get this triangle unlocked and how it goes. Um, it was so gross, but pretty much just saliva. I um just got like I I that was just really my strategy, like putting my saliva in the cracks, not in the whole cookie because I didn't want the whole thing to dissolve, but just in the cracks. And it was like it was fairly easy. I just did the triangle, I just did one line at a time. 
Um, and it wasn't bad. I think I had like three minutes left when I passed. So I wasn't, it wasn't like how like the umbrella, like they were going till the last second. Like this triangle was fairly easy. I could have gotten a good cookie though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it was easy. Okay. She said no sweat on my back. I it's like it. too bad it. after all. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I would love to try the umbrella again though. But yeah, the no, scene, the scene was beautiful. Yeah. At the set. Mm -hmm. No, it was cool. It was real cool. Definitely uh, was a sight to behold. It's just like the show. Um, but congratulations. Congratulations. Player 57 is moving on to the next round. She is moving and cruising. And it's easier than she thought. <laughs> Except for red light, green light. Um, Except for red light, green light. That was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So when we get back to the dorms, we see this phone pop up. Are you thinking about grabbing this phone? No. No, after the first person got food though, then I was like, kind of hungry. That might not be a bad idea to grab the phone. But um, actually, Nayo was helping me out and he was like, don't grab the phone. I'm gonna be eliminated. And I'm like, you're right. We are in a, like, cause I immediately went to food, but I had to reel it back and say, we are in a game. Let's not get the phone. Yeah, had to reel it back and. Well, that was a smart decision because um, 198 eventually ended up grabbing the telephone and then other people grabbed it and they got some other food of their own, but then he grabbed it twice. And I actually found out recently, like very recently, that he grabbed the phone. This is the first time I'm saying this too. So he, uh, he grabbed the phone twice because he was worried if someone else grabbed the phone, they could have the power to eliminate him. And he didn't want to go out getting eliminated by somebody else. So that's why he grabbed it twice, not because he was being like selfish or greedy yeah. or anything like that. So yeah. that definitely adds context to the situation. Yeah, I wish we got sure. to know that in the show. Um, it just yeah. looks like he just grabs it, which is misleading. It is. So yeah. that makes a lot more sense. That definitely that makes a lot more sense. For so, sure. Oh, yeah. But ultimately, he does not pivot with the prowess quick enough and is swiftly uh, ejected from the game after he cannot find someone else to give the phone to. And he did not want to give it to one of his friends. So that's the way he had to go out. And he think he knew he knew he was gonna get voted out anyways. He wasn't voted out. He wasn't get out here, and he made through the next game. He was gonna be voted out. So that's, he he knew that already. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we move on to the next game, which is Battleship. Or well, excuse me. Let me jump it forward. We move on to the next game, and we walk into the white room for the second time, and we see eight lines this time. So what are you thinking when you walk in and see these eight lines? Um, don't choose number four. <laughs> um, I was just like, well, I, I thought immediately it was tug of war for sure. Um, I mean, I was thinking there could be a chance not, but, um, so I just decided to just stay with my little group and hope for the best for sure. So stay with your group and hope for the best. And that ends you in line. Which line do you end up in? Eight. Eight. Line eight. So you get in line eight and you guys are getting ready to go in and you're finally called eventually. And you walk in there and lo and behold, you find it is not umbrella or not umbrella. Jesus. <laughs> it is not tug of war or yes. umbrella. It is warship. So when you see the set and you see the game, what's going through your head? I honestly was so excited. Um, I play this game like so much. Like I actually just learned that year how to play. And so I was like obsessed with it and I always played with my fiance. We would go to like this local coffee shop and play all the time. So I was like, oh my gosh, it's a sign. Like, this is amazing. Um, so I was actually really, really, really happy. Okay, she was excited. She was excited. And so eventually, yeah. So when you go in here, tell me the discussion about trying to figure out who's going to be in charge. So I'm not normally one to take like a leadership role. I'm kind of more of a team player. I don't really like mm -hmm. to make shots. Um, so I... I think they just saw my excitement for it. And so they were like, oh yes, like you're our captain. And at first, I guess I didn't really understand how um, big that would have been and how like detrimental it, it like possibly could have been. Um, and so, yeah, they were just, I, I, I felt like me and Joe were like the only ones who knew the game. No one else really knew. I didn't know anyone else knew how to play Battleship, so. Yeah. Did anyone else try and volunteer at all? No, um, just me and Joe. That was that was literally it. So like when they chose me, because how ecstatic I was, I immediately chose Joe to be by my side. Um, 
as well. I, no one else really came forward and showed that they knew how to play. Because um, I know it was it's a popular game, but kind of not really also. Not really. Okay. People people don't really play anymore these days. Yeah, no, nobody. I haven't played it in years, so. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, you know, a dead game, essentially. Yeah, there. it kind of is. So yeah. that's why I, I think that's where they nominated me, Captain. Okay, so she got nominated and she picked Joe as her co-captain. And so what is your strategy as a captain? You know, what, how, what is your strategy in placing the boats in certain spots? So I had kind of like a dumb idea, but looking back, it was dumb. But I was like, let's throw, because I'm normally used to seeing my opponent able to kind of throw them off and kind of be like, like move my hands over here so they think I'm placing it over here, but I'm really placing it over here. And so I was like, what if we call our numbers where we're moving it to kind of loud, throw the other team off, they think we're putting it on G2 and it's like actually on the opposite side. So I was in the middle of doing that, but since we can't really talk to my team and I couldn't tell them that, um, they were putting it where I was calling it. Um, yeah, and so I was like, no, 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 like I'm just trying to throw off the other team. And then right when I said that, the lady on the announcement was like, hey, um, time's up. And so I was like, I was like, no. So right away, that five boat was not where I wanted it because that was the one they were moving. And that was the one I called out. So I was like, oh my gosh, like that just backfired. It w just wasn't enough time um, to like actually talk and, and decide something quietly. So yeah, that five boat backfired. That that was not where I wanted it at all. The other boats were pretty good, um, but that five boat was not where I wanted it at. So you think the other captains heard you, for sure? I I think so. I mean, we were pretty loud. I was really trying to throw them off, and my team was following where I was trying to throw them off at. So how does that make you feel mm -hmm. on the edit, where it's like the captain has the strategy and whatnot, and it makes it seem real, real diabolical and funny when real real reality she heard you yeah i was really taken back by the edit i was already over the loss because it's been so long already but that edit was really hard um to see because it was a really really close game like really close and that edit makes it look like i got blown out and that was not the case like at all yeah. um it wasn't the case at all um we were two shots away from winning um Ah, so I also think maybe that's why she found that five vote first, because that was the one I was calling out. Um, but yeah, it was hard, hard to watch. Yeah, well, um, you know, they uh, you're going to get a smart woman over there in B and oh, yeah. number 19, Amanda. Um, but yes, her team sinks your five ship first. So four, mm -hmm. three, eight, four, three, five, two, six, seven, three, five, zero, and 34 are all eliminated yeah and, and uh they don't show they go through this game real quick like real yeah. quick um mm -hmm. so they don't show which boat you guys limited which boat did you guys get the two ship the two, two ships so you guys got the two ship mm -hmm. and then yeah they kind of just proceed with uh with you know getting your guys' three boats so how much longer did it take them a while to find a three boat or was it quick or it took them a while actually because we actually found their second ship first Mm -hmm. So, but it was a five boat. If it was a three boat, we would have won. Um, and we we thought we were gonna win because um, we were like, okay, if this next hit is a three boat, we got this. Like our three boat saved. Like we're everyone's safe except for our five boat, of course. But we got this. And then it just said hit. It didn't hit ship sunk. So I'm like, oh no, it's a five boat. But we actually found that one first before they found our three boat interesting interesting it was the they hit our five we found their two then we found their five and then they found our three it was a really yeah. good game i'm sad yeah. that they cut it short it was it was a really good game yeah no i definitely i was watching and i was like oh they hit something but they didn't yeah. show it and it did look like a good game you know and then unfortunately it was three six two 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 six and three five seven my crew oh, my that one hurt crew. uh mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you and 434 Joe are also eliminated as captain and lieutenant. So tell me what the vibe was like What when you guys lost the game. 
Mm. Well, I felt really, really bad. Even when my dive boat went out, I was so sad because they were all my friends. Too. Everyone on this team, we thought we were going out together or staying together. So it was really, really sad to see all of them go. So that's probably why you see me crying a lot. It's because it was really emotional to see my friends go out like that and feel like I had a part in that. You know, like that was tough. So whenever the game ended, I was honestly in shock because um, those weren't my normal rules of battleship. Um, and so I was like, wait, like all we had to do was hit two boats. Like that didn't really sink in quite yet. Um, I was shocked. Uh, so I was still like just sitting there like, wait, did that really just happen? You don't really feel like you're out until you're out, you know? Mm -hmm. What really hit me was whenever I saw one of the guards on a forklift outside. And then I'm like, oh, I'm I'm really out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, God. no, when you see like, the, when you see real stuff, like that's when I got out, I was like, oh crap. Like that's when it hits you, like I'm done. Like yeah. it's a wrap, you know? They say him, you mics and all this. I'm like, oh no, not my shit. <laughs> Yes, that was hard. But knowing that Nio and them were there, I was sad they weren't in the game still, but knowing that we were able to all be there for each other, Dr. Cat was there as well, and she has been so helpful in this journey with me. Um, when I saw them there, I was like, okay, like we're, we're going to be okay. Let's go have fun. She said, let's go have fun. So let's. So when, when you get back to the hotel, tell me how you feeling then. Um, That's kind of whenever I was actually my most sad because you're you're normally with so many people in one room um and then you go back to the hotel and you're kind of by yourself now for a little bit until we all went out but you're by yourself and so it's like oh wow like it's kind of sad you're just there with all of your emotions and that's it but we actually um all got back together and like we went out that night and it was really really fun that's nice that's excellent and so you guys had a good time out there, but then you take the flight home and you finally go back to Texas. Tell me what the mood is now that you're back home. I was honestly so excited to see my family. Um, I'm like a big family girl. That's also why I went on the show is to like to spoil them and pay for my wedding coming up. So I was really like happy to see everyone um, and just have them like be there for me in that moment. Cause I was like really at my lowest. So I just wanted my family at that point it, it actually snowed in Dallas the day I got back. Wow. Um, so I just went out in the snow and played like I was a kid again, and it, it was fun. Did you think about ever getting your fiance on the show with you? Um, I did. He's not like he wasn't really. He's like, no, I don't know about the applying, but he actually did apply for season two. Uh, if oh. there's if there's one. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I did think about it, but he was like, no, I don't know. Um, I don't think my audition will be as good as yours kind of type of thing. So I was like, okay. Like he's not really into reality show like I am, like reality TV. He's not really into that. Um, but whenever I told him my experience, he was like, I want to have a go at it and avenge your death. <laughs> avenge your death. Hey, yeah, come on now. We need both of y'all back on. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, yeah, that was um, unfortunate to where a friend Madison's journey and uh, player 57, you know, it was, it was, she was in, you know, kind of control of the battleships and then almost had it, but it just, you just needed a little bit more time. Maybe if it was like three ships, then you probably would have had it. I was interesting that they only put two ships, I think. Yeah. Also, okay. yeah. And also, the, like, whenever you hit a boat, normally you can, like, keep going yeah. um, until you miss. That yeah. I also was like, oh, if we could have just kept going. We would have had yeah. that five boat, you know. It wasn't my normal battleship, so I was definitely not in my element like I thought I was. Yeah, it was playing the UK version of battleship. Yeah, the warship version. Yeah, yeah warship. Oh my, like, look, this is this is not what game I thought, but hey, it is what it is. And that game, honestly, I mean, there's some strategy into it, some, yeah. but you know, it's it's kind of just hit or miss, you know. Yeah. And hopefully for sure. you can hit it and then keep following. But I think you, you know, had a good run. You know, you kind of made it a little bit over halfway through and whatnot. And you got to, you know, meet. So tell me what you kind of took away from the whole experience in itself. Um, I definitely learned a lot about myself. Um, definitely from Red Light, Green Light, like how strong mentally I can be. I'm actually a psychology student. So that was fun to challenge my inner mental strength. Um, so I definitely learned a lot during that. Um, and also I learned not to take life so serious and to relax and 
it'll be okay. Like even this edit coming out has taught me a lot about myself and not to care what others think really. And um, to just, it'll all be okay. And everything happens for a reason. Um, so I've definitely done some growing during this past year. That's good. That's good. I love to hear that. You know, personal growth is always the best kind. And if you ain't growing and you ain't showing, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's good that uh, that you had that. I definitely can agree with you 100% on that. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was a tough go, but you definitely took away a lot of things from there mm-hmm. that a lot of people, you know, could agree with. And, you know, some people really desire, you know, to kind of have a bonding experience with this, with other people and something kind of like this, because you don't ever get those kind of feelings and emotions yeah. anywhere else, really, you know, at any kind yeah. of regular job. Mm-hmm. So, so do you have any, uh, we've almost wrapped up. Do you have any parting words for the people before we get out of here? Um, Yeah, I'm just, I'm really thankful for this experience. And I definitely recommend anyone who's ever wanted to challenge their self and um, go through something this for this degree, I definitely recommend applying to any show, um, scared or not. Like, I feel like you'll really find yourself. Um, and I'm just really thankful for all of the friendships this show's brought, brought me. Um, and yeah, I'm really thankful for what it's taught me too. And it's definitely made me like realize how much I love my life. Like how much I'm thankful for everything that I have, my family, the, my friends, the the place I live, like, you know, it's very, it was very, um, I mean, we were stripped of everything in there at the food and our clothes. So it's very thankful to just come back home, have my family, have my group. And it's, just, I've just found a new, um, what's the word? Like love for everything that I have. I'm really, really thankful. That's beautifully said. That's beautifully said. Especially, you know, around this time of year, it's good to be thankful of all those things. Yeah. Couldn't have put it, said it any better myself. So I was, uh, I can definitely relate to that 100%. Um, well, yeah, Madison, I know we didn't get to talk a lot in the show. Uh, maybe like a time or two. I was, yeah. you know, I know, it, I, I feel like I spoke to you at least once. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. I thought I, I thought I was, I was like, oh, I've already talked to everyone. And now I'm watching the show and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't talk to them. I didn't talk to them. <laughs> I was like, wow, I really was not, I wasn't making my rounds. Yeah, it was, no, it was a ton of people. I'm like, you know, it was just impossible at that point to get to everyone. But definitely, you know, that's why I got the podcast going on. So we can, you know, you know understand each other's stories and whatnot. And so I definitely love yours. And, you know, we didn't get to meet, but maybe if I, you know, I get down to Texas sometime, we can link yes. up. And, uh, yeah. You know, Where are you from? I'm from KC, Kansas City, uh, but I live in New York. So. Oh, that's awesome. I love New York. New York has such a special place in my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a good spot. Why do you like New York so much? I actually got engaged there um, th- December last year. Okay, nice. Uh, nice. Rockefeller. Yeah. You know, I, I don't live too far from there. so. Oh definitely. my gosh, I'm so jealous. I, I love it. I would move there if it wasn't so far from my family. I would definitely move there. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a crazy spot, magical as well. Um, but it's cool, you know. You always get some cool things and whatnot, and you know, the finale is gonna be there, so definitely, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. We'll, we'll awesome. see if I end up next time, or not. You should, you should go. Um, next time I go to New York, I'll have to find you. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. It'll be a good time. Maybe I might be in Texas. Maybe for the Mizzou game itself. I'm still oh, trying yeah. to figure that out. Yeah. So cool. I just need the Texas airlines to work with me. Oh, yeah, I love Texas. I love Austin. Like, that's my favorite city in Texas and one of my favorite cities in the country. So, well, Madison, I really do appreciate you joining me today on the podcast. It was a privilege and pleasure to get to have, pleasure to have you. And definitely, you know, I see congratulations on the wedding that's coming up. You Thank won't you. be Cavazos too much longer. No. It's going to be, what is it going to be? It's going to be Berlanga. So, I, I'm actually engaged to my middle school sweetheart. Oh, that's yeah, so Cedric Berlanga. We actually, it's it's very rare, but we got together when we were 13. Wow. Oh, crazy, man. right? That is I crazy. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I love that for you. And I can't wait to, you know, get engaged and or get married and start this kind of new yeah. chapter of your life. And it's going to be yeah. exciting for sure. So Thank you. Definitely yes. big props on that. But yeah, y'all, we got to bounce up out of here. 
It was a pleasure to get to speak to y'all again. I thank y'all for attending the Squid Games Aftermath podcast. The player, me and Madison, player 57. Until next time, y'all, peace and blessings. Bye. Thank you.